we have a particular focus on whipworm infections. Now, most people won't have heard of whipworms, despite the fact that about one in 15 people on the planet actually have whipworm infection. So we've begun to look a little bit deeper into the parasite as to perhaps how this parasite is able to survive for such long periods of time. Now, adult whipworms secrete lots of molecules. They secrete hundreds of proteins into their surroundings. But what we were able to notice was that it's dominated by one single protein. So we decided we would try and uh, produce a structure of the molecule through X-ray crystallography. We have the actual structure of this whipworm, this dominant whipworm protein. And here you can see we have a sort of potential groove where something might fit in it, another molecule might fit in it. And some of this analysis suggested that one, it could bind some sugar-coated molecules just from analysis of the structure of a small part. Now, together with colleagues at the Wellcome Center for Cell Matrix Research, we're able to confirm that yes, this molecule does indeed bind these sugar-coated molecules that form part of the extracellular matrix of the body. And two, and perhaps most interestingly, it might bind this immune cytokine into leukin-13. It would stop IL-13 working in tissue culture, and excitingly, it would stop mice making an allergic response in the lung. And therefore, we now believe we have got a new molecule, a completely novel molecule to biology that actually can inhibit allergic responses. And for our research into the parasite, it means two things. One, we can start to use this as a target to develop new antiparasitic drugs to. And secondly, this might be a naturally evolved inhibitory molecule for allergic type responses. So for people that have got allergic asthma or other kinds of allergies, maybe by studying the biology of this molecule, they're going to be able to, to utilize what evolution has given the parasite in a more therapeutic way going forward.